to start with, what do we already know that's gonna help us in today's lesson? Well, hopefully we all already know about addition. We know how to add things up. And actually addition is really helpful for understanding multiplication. So we already know something super, super important that's gonna help us. So let's dive into our first part of the lesson. Now, I want to know, did anyone go on an Easter egg hunt on their Easter holidays? Did anyone do an Easter egg hunt? Oh, I can see a few hands in the air. Excellent. I did as well. Perfect. So did Pip. Pip went on an Easter egg hunt and he's been really, really good. He's saved up all of his Easter eggs. He's not eaten a single one and he's got them all together. And now he wants to know how many Easter eggs did he get all together? But he's put them into groups of three because he quite likes counting in threes. But he's got quite a lot and he says, ah, oh, three, three, three. It's so tedious to add up all these threes. He's saying it's really boring to add up all these threes. Now we might look at that and think, actually, there's not that many there. But what if I asked you to do this sum for me? What if I asked you to add up all of these threes? Would we think this is a little bit boring? Yeah, it's a little bit boring to do, isn't it? So that's why we have multiplication because adding up loads and loads of threes is really boring and it takes a long time. So Bud has come along, Bud has come along and said, actually, if you want to find the sum of equal numbers, just use multiplication. Now there's a lot there, so let's have a look at what Bud is actually saying. Bud is saying, if you want to find the sum, okay, the sum of equal numbers. Now you might have heard of this word before, the sum, all that means is the total, okay? Sum equals total. It means how much do we have all together? So if I want to find the sum of Pip's Easter eggs, all I want to find is the total number of Easter eggs. That's all that means. So if you want to find the sum of equal numbers, now this is also really important. When we do multiplication, we have to make sure all our groups are the same size, okay? We saw Pip was adding up groups of three, didn't we? So all his groups were the same size. That's really important for multiplication and we'll see more of that in a minute. So who knows what our multiplication sign looks like? If you do, I want you to maybe use your arms or use your fingers to show me what does it look like. And you can also write it in the chat box if you'd rather do that. Excellent, lots of us doing very, very good multiplication signs, excellent. So if we don't know, we can copy everyone else in the class. We're doing a big X shape like this with our arms, a big X shape. That is what our multiplication sign looks like, okay? And we're going to be using this lots and lots in today's class, so keep our eyes peeled for our X, our multiplication sign. Okay, so we've learned a little bit about what multiplication might be, but Pip and Bud, they're off on an adventure this week. They're off on an, an adventure, and they might be learning a little bit about multiplication on the way. So let's have a look at who they bump into. So we have Pip and Bud dressed up, ready for their adventure, and they've bumped into our friend, the professor. And our professor says, welcome to the treasure hunt. There are four levels. And if you pass a level, you will receive a piece of the treasure map. If you can pass all of them, you will get to the treasure. Oh, that sounds interesting, doesn't it? There's some treasure up for grabs at the end of this lesson. Pip says, let's try it. They're up for it. They're excited to go on an adventure. So our professor says, are you ready? Here comes the first level. So if we're ready to try and get our first piece of the treasure map, I want everyone to shout out a big yes if you're ready. <laughs> Excellent, we're all nice and nice ready to go on our treasure hunt. Excellent job. Let's see if Pip and Bud are ready. They say we are ready, they're ready too. Let's see if we can solve the first puzzle to get our first piece of the treasure map. So we can see on the screen, we have some fish friends. We found some fish friends in the woods with us and we can see they're in three groups, aren't they? We have one group, two groups and three groups. We have three groups of fish. Now, my first question is each group has how many fish? So how many fish are in each group? This one we're going to shout out, okay? How many fish are in each group? 
Excellent, nice easy question to start with. We can see there are two fish in each group. Wonderful job, everybody. Each group has two fish. Now, if I want to know how many fish we have all together, how many fish we have in total, we can do an addition sum, can't we? We could add up how many are in each group. We could do the two fish in our first group, plus the two fish in our second group, plus the two fish in our third group, okay? We could do two plus two plus two. This would tell me how many fish we have all together, wouldn't it? But we can also use multiplication, and this is where multiplication is really handy because two plus two plus two isn't that tricky of a sum, is it? We could all do that pretty easily. But if we had a longer sum, like we saw earlier, that horrible three plus three plus three plus three, that would take us a long time, wouldn't it? So let's see how we can write our multiplication sum. Now our multiplication sum is set up like this, okay? We write the number of groups we have. We saw there were three groups of fish, didn't we? So we have three groups. So we start with the number three. Then we have our multiplication sign, our big X, okay? Our multiplication sign, so we're doing three times. And then we times it by how many are in each group. Show me on your fingers, how many did we say were in each group? Excellent, there were two in each group, weren't they? Well done, there were two fish in each group. So we can write our sum as three times two. We have three groups of two fish. We have three lots of two. That's the way I think about our multiplication sign. Excellent, I can see some of you have written it out really nicely. But multiplication is also a little bit like addition. With addition, it doesn't matter what order we add our numbers up, does it? We could do two plus three, or we could do three plus two. They give us the same answer. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Multiplication is the same. We can do three times two, or we can do two times three. They're both the same sum. They both mean the same thing. Okay, so... Do we understand our first part of the lesson? You can give me a thumbs up if you're happy with that first part that we've just learned. Okay, lots of us thumbs ups. Don't worry, those of you that are giving me a thumbs down though, we have another practice, okay? And this time I want you guys to help me out a little bit more with it. So firstly, how many trees do we have in our picture? Again, we're gonna shout this out. And if you want to follow along, we're on page five of our textbooks now, okay? Page five in our workbooks is this question. And you can have a go at filling it in as we go. But how many trees can we see in the picture? If we shout it out in three, two, one. Excellent, I hear most of us saying the right answer. There are three trees in our picture, aren't there? There are three trees we can see. We have one, two, three, X, and I can see some people in the chat box as well. Let's, okay, so we have three trees. We have three trees. Each tree has how many apples? So count carefully and then show me on your fingers or in the chat box, how many apples are on one tree? Excellent, lots of us, perfect. Lots of us showing the right number of fingers. Lots of us in the chat box as well. Excellent job, everybody. There are five, aren't there? There are five apples on each tree. Wonderful. So if I was going to write this as an addition sum, if I wanted to know how many apples I have in total, what addition sum will I do? I want someone to come up on screen and tell us. So if you're new and you don't know how this works, press the raise your hand button on the screen and you'll be able to come up and answer the question. So we want to know what is our addition sum for the total number of apples? Can you tell me? Five, add five, add five. Excellent, Charlene. Perfect answer. Wonderful. It is five plus five plus five, isn't it? Because we have five apples on each tree. So we could do five plus five plus five. Excellent job. Okay, who thinks they can tell me how we would write this as a multiplication sum? Okay, so remember, we do the number of groups of the number of trees times by the number of apples on a tree. So who thinks they can? Victoria. Five times three. 
or three times five. Excellent, Victoria. Perfect. Wonderful job. Victoria gave us both ways of writing our sum. We can say there are three trees times by five apples on each tree. We can do three times five, or we can write it the other way around. We can do five times three, can't we? Okay, so how well do we understand our first part of the class? We're going to have a vote. So press A if you understand everything we've just done, press B if you kind of understand, and press C if you don't understand. Okay, so we use multiplication when we're adding together groups of the same size. So if I was trying to add together two plus two plus three, could I use multiplication? No, I couldn't, could I? I couldn't use multiplication because they're not the same size. So all our groups have to be the same size. So like with our apples, each tree had the same number of apples. And how we put together a multiplication sum, all we do is we write the number of groups we have times by the number in each group, okay? This is our formula. This is the way we set up all of our sums. And finally, the third thing we learned that it works both ways. It doesn't matter which way round we write our sum. Two times five is exactly the same as five times two. Okay, so let's have some more practice of our multiplication sums.